Hey, what's going on with you guys? Thank you for tapping in with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Cleveland. So uh, I hope this video finds you all in the absolute best of health and spirits wherever you might be. In this video, we're going to finally clean this. This thing right here. This right here is a 75 gallon saltwater aquarium and it's going to be crazy. I've been talking about how long it takes to clean this thing. And as you can see, I'm stocked up trying to make sure this go as fast as possible. Got vacuum cleaner right there. It's all kind of stuff going on. So um, we're about to deal with this madness together. But uh, first, let me go ahead and move all of my fish food that I feed these fish. The ocean nutrition. You got to get on a level. A lot of different foods for your saltwater fish. So let me go ahead. I got to take off the canopy, take off the... well. We'll keep the light up there, but take off the canopy. And then we're going to start by, I don't know. Let's just do it together. We'll see what I start by doing. This is going to be a nightmare, guys. I hope you're ready. Strap on your seatbelts. Make sure you grab you a little snack. You're going to be here for a while. Matter of fact, grab a Snickers. So this right here is the Vispectra or Viper Spectra light. This right here is the canopy lid that I made. And uh, like I said, we gotta keep the light, keep the light going. But first, what I need to do is, look at all this, look at all this salt creep. Look at the salt creep. That happens all the time with saltwater aquariums. Basically, basically what you can keep recording, baby. I'll talk about it while you get up close. Basically, what causes salt creep is as the water sprays on any surface, the it basically crystallizes once it dries. So that's what salt creep is. It's the water crystallizing after it dries wherever on whatever surface that it lands on. So it is pretty annoying and it gets a little unsightly. This was actually hidden, so I didn't really see it. But uh, that's why when you top off your aquariums from evaporation, as you see, salt doesn't evaporate, just the water. So when you, um, I'm actually going to put that back in there. So that's why when you top off your tanks with your RODI, that's what you should use for your saltwater aquariums. You know, you make sure you use fresh water. You don't add more salt water because all you're going to do is raise your salinity level. So keep that in mind. So, you know, you just. It's not that bad. It's not that bad to clean off. So let me go ahead. I want to take these two lids. Probably take them outside, rinse them off, bring them back in when it's time. So let me go ahead and do that right quick. I'm not. All right, so let's get the light back on so we can see what we're doing. Mm. All right. There we go. Okay, so I'm actually going to move this light put it back on a 37 gallon eventually what do I need first all right trying to figure out a strategy y'all so a lot needs to be done a lot needs to be done I'm going to take my baster and I am going to spray down the rocks now I usually don't like to do this because it extends the time that it takes to clean the aquariums but it's looking pretty bad. Watch this. Look at that. Look at that. So this is the reason why I have no choice. It's been a long time since I've done this. So you don't have to do this every time you clean it. But if you see a lot of debris on your rock work, you might want to give it a little spray. It's like dusting it off. Give it a little spray. So that's what I'm doing. Giving it all a little spray down. 
I'm not going to go too crazy. And then you just let it all settle. And then you could go ahead and vacuum it or siphon it right off of the sand. Carter. You can't make it through there, Papa. <coughs> you really can't make it. <coughs> so as, yeah. Thank you, babe, for asking. So as you can see, want to see if your mic worked? You sure? So as you can see, it's a lot of debris all over this rock work. And this is a little satisfying. It's more work in the end, but it would make the aquarium look so much better. And it's a lot healthier. Look at that, it's crazy. A lot healthier for your fish. That's just my opinion. That's just, this is just how I do it. Look at that. It's disgusting. All right, so now, yeah, get this out of here. Move this on over so I can access the rest of this rock. Sorry, babe, I know I got in your way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's nasty. It's not that bad, though. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Well, it pretty much looked like this. I'm just saying overall, it's really not. You see me, Pops? Yeah. Say yuck. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, already almost done. So it's really not that. It really wasn't that bad. I can't believe I was about to bypass that portion. I'm glad I didn't. Just never know until you do it. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Especially since there's like no cyanoalgae or anything on the rock work. It's just food that's that broken up and you know, it was just accumulating on the rock work. That's easier. Right. That too. But I think a lot of that Food, yeah. is uh, being broken down. Well, it looks clear though. I'm like a little hazy because of that, but for the most part, it's clear. Man, on camera it might, but we see, uh, we see the real. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> we see the real. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not clear. Not clear right now. So now, next thing I want to do is I want to take my scrubber. And this is going to basically, let's move the light on over. See if, I had to, if I had it raised up. Go ahead and get this out the way. Move it out the way. All right, there we go. So I'm definitely going to use my uh, my razor scraper because a lot of this. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna yeah, I'm gonna start off with this. See what I could get off first, and then hit the tough areas with the razor. Right, Papa? Hit all the tough areas with the razor. this side so yeah all that all that algae is just really stuck to the glass but I use this first just so I don't have to get all the easy areas with the razor because the razor is kind of kind of tough and especially next to the silicone 
I certainly want to make sure that I'm using the, the little foam brush instead of the razor next to that. I've already damaged the silicone a little bit from the razor, so be careful. And this is not a do this like me video. This is just me showing you because a lot of people have requested that I show how I clean the 75 gallon. So this is just how how I do it. By all means, clean your aquariums. Carter, don't do that. Clean your aquariums the way you clean them. Not the way somebody else do it. Unless you really feel like, oh, that's such a great idea. Let me, then that's something different. But I'm not telling you to do this like me. Not at all. And I certainly want to get the back. Yeah. I can't even see it because it's dark, but I know. I know it's going to be satisfying. This. All right. So I need to get the back right quick. I can't really show that off. Matter of fact. There's a couple things I got to do first. Pull this off. Matter of fact, let me unplug it. Where we at? Where we at? It's on this side. Okay, there we go. Dump that in here. Eh, in fact, dump it in there. There we go. And that's the sponge. I think it's pretty nasty. There we go. So now I can really get this back wall. Some people don't really care about cleaning the back walls. I mean, I feel like I've had, it's been a point in time where I didn't care so much about that, but you know, it does matter. If you could get back there, that's why it's important not to have your rock work right up against the back glass exactly, or against any glass at all, whether it's the sides or the front, so you could really get in there and do a good job with cleaning it. Nah, it's okay, but just get what you can. If you could show off the front while I'm doing this, that that helps too. We're definitely getting it, getting it pretty murky in here. That's for sure. But it's it's necessary. So I want to pull the sponge out of here. All right. Um, now it's time to pull the. Yeah. So now I'm about to use my razor and scrape down the glass. All right. So now. All right. We're gonna go ahead and uh, and proceed with scraping off this tough algae. Where's that from? This mm -hmm. clean tool, mm -hmm. a company that we don't um, oh. we don't talk about. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you could get in on that. But it's definitely any kind of any kind of razor, y'all. You don't have to be through the company that we're not gonna mention. Just as long as it's a razor, it's gonna get that tough algae off. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh that. Satisfying. Yeah, that's the difference. That makes the difference hundred percent. So watch this hard algae right here on the side. 
Ooh, you still don't want to come off. There we go. Playing around with me. Get up off this tank. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Yeah, so like I said, you need multiple tools to get a good cleaning on your aquariums, in my opinion. You know, there's not one tool to just do it all. I wish it was, but for my experience, right, exactly. Very convenient. All right. There's like some green right there, baby. Up top. Up top? in the back too. Yeah, All right, so I got this section good. Uh, but you haven't gotten over here. At all. Oh. Uh-uh. Nope. This light is only allowing us to really do one at a time before I got to move it around. So yeah, now I'm just getting some of this hard algae off the back glass, even though it's not that problematic. Don't really see it because we have this film on there. I know it's there and every now and then you just want to take care of it. I don't know how murky the tank looks in the it's in the. It's very hazy right now. Oh, now it's bad, huh? Well, that's pretty good. It took a lot to get it mm -hmm. to that point. But that's how you know you're really cleaning it, because if all that was in the rock work and you know on the on the glass. Mm-hmm. Really going to town. All right. Yeah, it's murky. It's <laughs> marked up. All right, so I'm going to start off with the back. Yeah, you. Let me see. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah, throw it away in the garbage. Yeah, at this point, I can't even really see yeah. what's going on. I'm just kind of like. This light's not helping either? Well, not on this side. I can't really have the light right here and get back there. So yeah. I kind of just got to. It feels grimy. You could kind of tell. Yeah, once, I that, it. once I get it off, it's smooth. Yeah, I'm just listening to it. Y'all wanted me up, didn't you? All right. So now let's see what we're working with. Okay. All right. Looking good. And you make sure you turn the pumps off and everything when you're doing this so it's not constantly kicking up. So it does have a time, have time to settle down. And that way when it settles, you can vacuum it out. Vacuum or siphon. 
I keep saying vacuum because they do have the gravel vacs, but in my case, it's more like a siphon. Let's get this front piece, front piece of glass. You want me to move this or are you good? Nice, it's good. All right. Mm-hmm. There's more right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not down, baby. Oh. I'm just getting the bottom. Sorry. It's okay. Good. Be careful, please. Thank you for the hood. All right, so one of the keys is you look at it from a top, and then you'll really be able to see from an angle what areas you missed. Definitely a telltale. There we go. All right. All right. I think I got it. Mm-hmm. That's it. So now, now that I'm done with all that glass cleaning, come on, can't get that off. Nope, okay. All right, so the glass cleaning is over. Now it's time to siphon everything out. That's where we bring this trash can into play. Yeah, I need that now. Let me see. Let me see the dolly. Let me see the dolly, Papa. And your toes are super dirty now. Here, I need it. Thank you. So far, so good. Good job, Papa. All right. I feel like sometimes this thing be hitting my chin and making some noise. Ooh, hopefully this thing, this thing might fall in. Put it on the side right here. Can't really put it in this, on the side. Man, that's when that V-neck come in handy. Right. Sometimes, like when I'm doing the editing, I hear it like, it's, I, it sound like it's going dead, but it's not. It's because... Yeah, I, I think I heard it before. Mm-hmm. Happens in a lot of videos. It happened in the last one. Oh. Okay. There we go. So now I'm just getting all of this debris off the sand. Should wait, should wait a few minutes to let it all settle. Right. Because I see it all floating. Mm hmm. Me too. That's what Julie says she don't know how to do. Huh? That's what Julie says she don't know how to do. What? Siphon it out. She couldn't get it. Good job. Well, siphoning can be a little challenging if you don't really have the one with this little pump right there. If you're doing, if you have an old school siphon, it could be hard. But grab the one that got this little pump. It definitely makes yeah, it a lot easier. Or she'll watch the video. Oh yeah, big shout out to, 
to Maddie. <laughs> Shout out to Maddie. Appreciate all the support, girl. It's okay, Pop. No, you can't do that. We need this now. So not quite sure how many how many gallons I'll take out. I'll uh, take out as many as I need to, though. I'll tell you that. So this process is kind of long. But at the same time, this is the necessary process of the tank cleaning. Some people don't do sand vacs, gravel vacs, but I do. You see all that, all that debris that's left on the sand. Get that up out of there. Also, with substrate, over time you could create these gas pockets that's very harmful and toxic to your fish. So what ends up happening is that they'll just burst inside of the tank. And release gases that could potentially kill your fish. So that's why it's good to have um, inhabitants that stir up the, the sand or your gravel um, continuously so that doesn't happen. Other ways, of, other ways of remedying that is you get in there with the siphon and you stir it up. You go ahead and make sure that these gas pockets are not existing up under your substrate. So in case you didn't know. Look, look it up. Send me one for me, babe. Yeah, I found that out like like ten years ago, and that's why I've always did my my gravel vacuuming. That's another reason why I always like fish that disturb the substrate, like cichlids, like they're constantly digging, so you don't have to worry about that. But imagine if you don't have a fish that bothered the substrate at all, and you and they just sit there and keep on, um, you know defecating and things like that and it just keeps building up in the substrate you know that's where that's where those gas pockets come from so it's important to know that it's important to do your research mm -hmm. all right so it's really not going to take that much time to get this done it's once i'm uh done uh doing this sand vac I will clean this up. Hey, Papa, we see you. Yeah. Hi. Hey, Pops. Hi. What's up, Carter? <laughs> Don't want to get stung by the lionfish. Eh? See, watch when I bring the light on the other side. You Then you're going to see that substrate. You're going to be like, ooh. Oh, really? Careful. Definitely see the difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get all the way back there. Uh-huh. Now let me bring the light onto the other side. And now you can see what's up. You should empty that out so it's oh well it's on the thing. Yeah, that's why he lost his little go kart. See that white sand? Come on. There we go. That's where you at under all of this. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you see what I gotta do. Let me go ahead and finish up this process and then I'll be right back with you when it's time to move on to the next step. All right, y'all, so if you take a look, we have taken out a good 50% of this aquarium, 50% of the water. So now I need to go ahead and clean out this sump. 
I'm only going to do the one sump. I don't really touch the refugiums at all, at all. So the refugium, the hang on the back refugium, didn't really touch that. And I'm not touching the one down below. Matter of fact, some of y'all might be new here. So you don't know, we have a hang on the back refugium right there. We have plenty of copa pods in there, thriving, living, doing what they do, helping to keep the main help, helping and keeping the tank maintained. We also have a hang on the back overflow box that leads down to our sumps below the aquarium. So we have a refugium right here. I don't touch that. And then we have this sump over here. All this is DIY aside from the hang on the back refugium. That's a really nice hang on the back refugium right there. So if you have a smaller aquarium and you need one, check it out. But anyway, so for the sump, what I want to do is, where's my towel right here? So I have this vacuum. What I plan on, let me take this. What I plan on doing, hopefully you don't get my, all right. So what I plan on doing is I want to clean out the sponges. Let me grab my bucket because I can get closer. I'm going to pull out the sponges. I want to rinse the sponges out of tank water. Then I plan on taking out these media blocks. I'm actually going to put all of the media blocks in this chamber right here. But, I'll, but after that, I also need to take out the water. So I'm going to pump the water out of this sump. I'm going to put it in there and then I'm going to vacuum out all of the debris. So I need to make sure I do that. That way, all this just debris is just not continuously sitting in here and being pushed back into the aquarium. So a little bit of work, but necessary work. So first thing I'll do is, since it's a ton of water and this is a small vacuum, I will pump out that water, as much water as I possibly can. Okay. All right. Oh, dude, don't want that hitting that. All right. So this is not necessary if uh, you don't have a sump. Matter of fact, I think I want to cover up that bottom outlet too, babe, with an um, outlet cover if we have a spare. I don't know where they're at, but we definitely have spares. All right, so thank you for holding it. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, we're going to pump out as much of this water as I possibly can. All right, so now that I uh, drain this tank, drain this sump, I already took out the sponges. Let me throw all the sponges right in this trash can right here. So use tank water when you put your sponges in there. That way you don't kill off any of your beneficial bacteria. Now what I need to do is need to make room for all of these media blocks. I do need to take them out so I can do a good cleaning on this sump. This sump is real foul. <sighs> Got old knees. All right, I'm gonna have to figure something else out because I can't bring it that close. blocks right here I should put some filter floss in this first compartment to help collect all of this large debris that seems to make it all the way to the last chamber just might all right, that's the last one. All of those blocks. Now this one, now this compartment right here has all of the ceramic rings. And again, I want it out. I might even bag these up. If I had it bagged up, it'd be a, be a lot easier to clean this out. Mm 
can hear that noise on pop. This is not that bad. Already got almost all of it out of there. No, Papa. What's going on? What you pointing at? That cup? It's not your cup no more. This is your cup. When'd you put that in there, boy? Here. When'd you put that in there? Snuck it in there, huh? Yeah, you did. All right. That's all of the media. That's where all of the biological media colonized. Now let's go ahead and vacuum out the rest of this nasty muck. All right. Last time had a little little spray coming out the back. Filled up quick. It filled up real quick. All right. So I got to empty it. Oh, yeah. Forgot. Still got all this <laughs> silicone. Silicone in it. That's even that. That's really nasty. That's That's bad. Look at that. All right. So that's it. I got to flush this. I'll be right back. So now I'm just going to clean these chambers out a little bit better and put everything back in there so they'll work a little bit more efficient. So let me go ahead and, uh, and get that done and I'll be back with you. All right, y'all. So this thing is finally clean. Got the sump cleaned out. Took about four and a half hours to get this aquarium clean. I told you it was going to take a long time. Still not satisfied. Got some debris on the sand. 
I'm not doing anything about that tonight. It's pretty late now. So uh, anyway, that's the process of cleaning this aquarium. I told you it takes a lot longer than the bigger aquariums. But uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I'm ready to get on with my night. All right, so as you've seen, we clean this um, 75 gallon aquarium. It's a monster when it comes to cleaning. It really is. But anyway, that's it. Hope that you learned something. Hope that you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you like the video, like the video, share the video. I'm gonna catch you on the next one. Peace. All right, y'all, so we almost at 20K. We almost at 20K. I appreciate you all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, share the content, help us get to that 20K. Also, follow us over on TSD with me on TikTok and YouTube. That is our other channel behind the scenes. You get to see all the behind the scenes content. Aida's in charge of that one. She's been doing a wonderful job getting ahead of me. So if you want to get ahead of me too, you got to follow over there. But again, I appreciate you all. Let's get to that 20K. Have a good one. Peace.